going on, everybody? This is Sean of Raw Select Music. Today, I want to talk about this record right here. This is John Carroll Kirby's Septet, released on Stone's Throw Records on June 25th, 2021. Despite the fact that I didn't know anything about John Carroll Kirby's music, I was very, very curious when I found out about this record. The idea of a sort of jazz fusion throwback record being released on Stone's Throw just seemed like the sort of thing that was exactly up my alley. So I picked it up, gave it quite a few listens, and today I want to share my thoughts and opinions of this record with you guys and let you know if I think it's worth checking out. So with all that being said, yeah, let's talk about this guy. For those of you who don't know, LA-based keyboardist, pianist, composer John Carroll Kirby has been a behind-the-scenes player since the late 2000s, racking up a huge amount of credits with artists as eclectic as Solange, Bat for Lashes, Nora Jones, Mark Ronson, David Holmes, Mike Doty, formerly of Soul Coughing, and Will I Am! Fuck? as well as many, many more. At this point, it seems like you could probably pick a popular artist and there's a 50-50 chance that they've probably worked with John Carroll Kirby. But in 2017, he put his own composing skills to the test with the release of his first solo project entitled Travel and has been just as prolific with his own releases as he has been with all of his session work. In 2019, he released his first album for the Stone's Throw adjacent label Leaving Records called Meditations and Music, with him jumping over to Stone's Throw in 2020 for his album My Garden, and now for this one right here, Septet, coming out in 2021. For Septet, which was recorded live, he recruited some top-notch musicians like Dean Tony Parks on drums, David Leach on percussion, John Paul Moramba on bass, Nick Mancini on vibraphone, Tracy and Logan Hone on woodwinds, with JCK manning the keys and synths on this project. In terms of describing this project, John Kirby had this to say about the music video for the track Rainmaker, which I think is pretty descriptive of this album as a whole. Overall, his take on Retro Meets Future Jazz was very well received with critics, with it earning an average score of 87 on Metacritic, with all outlets praising the album highly, but it receiving the highest praise from all music, which had this to say about it. So what do I think in all of this? I gotta say, I think I think I might even like this album more than all music does. And truth be told, had I had heard it back in 2021, it would have easily ended up very, very high on my end of the year list. Simply put, I think this is not only one of the strongest releases from Stone's Throw last year. This is one of the strongest releases Stone's Throw has put out ever. This is an absolute masterpiece in my mind. And it's kind of surprising that it doesn't seem like it really got all that much press last year. It seems like it was kind of a low key release and that's really disappointing because this is truly some of the most unique, original, fun, a word that you don't normally associate with like jazz fusion music that I've heard in a while. I love the fact that John Carroll Kirby seemingly has done his homework, knows his shit. This sounds like an author authentic, old school, jazz fusion, jazz funk record, but also at the same time, it's not so obsessed with just recreating the past that it completely forgets to also have something of a unique modern edge to it as well. And it does that in spades. It's perfectly balanced as all things should be. And then some, all the stuff on here is just absolutely inspired. Inspired. It's all incredibly catchy. Some of it's a little bit moving. Some of it is just sort of playful. This is one of those records that I can honestly just listen to in any mood. And I'm always constantly finding myself enjoying or finding something new about this record that I like. And I think that comes down to not only the variety of instrumentation that's on here with all the different horns and woodwinds and flutes and drums and percussion and the synths and keyboards that are employed on here. But just the immaculate attention to melody on this record is something that I haven't heard in a jazz funk record in such a long time. So many of the tracks on here are absolutely hummable. And even as I'm recording this video right now, some of them are stuck in my head. So it shouldn't come as a surprise at all that there are a ton of 
highlights on here. Some of my favorite tracks on here include the absolutely pitch perfect opener Rainmaker, which sounds like something straight out of the 70s if it was perfectly updated for today's sounds, as well as the absolutely perfect closer on here. The track Nucleo has these epic movements to them while also having a bit of broken beat edge to it. And then so many of the tracks on here have like this almost Rene Costi with uh, one of his more mellow tracks here. I can't remember the name at all of it off the top of my head. But it has that same exact sort of easy going, lazy Sunday stroll down the street on a sunny day vibe to it that I just, I absolutely love. And he pulls it off perfectly to the point where it never sounds corny, but also at the same time, it's just so positive and just full of life that I, I can't help but love it. There really isn't a weak moment on here. I guess I could complain that maybe some of the tracks start to blend together melodically, but even then, none of it is boring. It's always an interesting interesting, unique, inspirational, entertaining, enjoyable record. And I haven't gotten this much pleasure out of a jazz fusion funk record in so long. And it's just so refreshing to hear somebody who obviously loves the music that he's paying homage to, but also knowing that it really doesn't do the genre any justice if he's just trying to replay those old classic sounds from artists like Herbie Hancock and uh, the Crusaders or Joe Sample or anybody like that. So it's just this perfect example of everything that I look for in modern jazz. And if any of that sounds interesting to you, I cannot recommend this album enough. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this here. Oh, also one quick thing. If you get the record copy of this, it does come with three different dub versions of other tracks on here and they're all fantastic and I love them too. So yeah, that's another reason to pick up this vinyl. So yeah, okay, now I'm gonna leave it there. So that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Thanks as always for watching. If you've listened to this record at all, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. If you wanna hear this record for yourself, please head over to my WordPress blog because that's where I post music links to any of the records that I talk about on this channel. And make sure you follow me over on Twitch for Live From The Record Room, my weekly DJ live streams where I play records like the ones that I talk about in these videos, as well as a whole host of other records in my collection that I don't get a chance to talk about on this channel. Links to everything as always down in the description that's gonna be it for me today guys thanks as always for watching and i will catch you in the next video so until then peace out